Hello, all you hardcores. Welcome to part two. We're joined by Jerry. Women love him, men want to be him. That's your catchphrase. <laughs> you what, Jerry? That's your catchphrase, isn't it? You know the Bobby on that one, don't you? Can I just give a big shout out to Alex? Uh, can you email me again, Alex? I lost contact with you. Uh, hope you're well, Alex. Uh, Devin Haney against Garcia. How you see that going? I'm going to... Are you there, I'm Jerry? Go away. Yeah, can you hear me, mate? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you're not very clear there, though. Sorry, what about now? Yeah, that's a bit better, Jerry. Don't be shy, come on. You've not still got that magnum tash, have you? Yeah, I do, I do have it. <laughs> yeah. You need to, um, get, you need to get amputated off. Like, like, like Terry McDermott. Uh, I can't. If, I, uh, if the tash goes, I lose all my power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you remember when Sunas had a big tash? Graham yeah, Sunas yeah. with his muzzy, him and Tommy Smith. They had massive ones like Spit the Dog's dad, didn't they? Yeah. They had them for years. Yeah. Getting back to Haney versus Garcia, I'm going to go for Haney on points. Uh, yeah, that's... I had to think about it for a bit. I had to really um, choose who I thought had shown a better form recently. So I'm going with Haney on that one on points as well. Nick um, Ball against Ray Vargas. Um, who was that, sorry? Nick Ball from UK against Ray Vargas for WBC silver belt. Basically a trinket. Uh, I've got Ball winning by a KO, me. Um, I'm not actually really familiar with him. Um, I'm just having a look here. I'm Team Nick know. Ball, me. Team Nick Ball. Well, he's 19 and 0, like, so... He's obviously doing well for himself. Um, yeah, I, I'm not familiar with him at all, so that's somebody I need to keep an eye out on. You see uh, him winning on in a knockout then? You are. You see him winning uh, win, by knockout for that fight? Uh, I see Nick Ball winning by KO, yeah. Yeah, I do, yeah. Uh, the guard. He's saying that it's big freeze will be pulled out of the Wardley fight as he's not ready for that level yet. What do you think to that, Jerry? The guard, the guard has said that. <laughs> the guard said what? that. That's crazy. It's not. That's not legit though. That's that's just him talking shit, right? That's him talking in an interview. Yeah, he's saying he thinks he's going to be put. He thinks he'll be pulled out. Controversial from the guard. What do you think to that, Jez? Um, I hope not. Um, I was looking forward to that fight. Um, I am going with Wardley in that one. Uh, I hope not. I really hope not. And I hope that's guard just talking shit and um. There's muddy in the waters because you know how he likes to say things uh, and you know get a bit of attention for himself. Um, unless he knows something that we don't, or has heard a whisper or heard something from somebody. Um, but I, I hope that's not going to happen, mate. I hope that's not going to happen. Well, we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to see. The guy also thinks that Conor Ben will be given a two-year ban. From the UK, and that'll take him up to April. Uh, really? A backdated two year ban, but he's already fought twice in America, so the ban do not mean nicks, doesn't mean no, does it really now? They've just done what no. they wanted, haven't they? Absolute farce. Um, sick to death of it. Uh, what kind of bullshit is that? Uh, two year backdated ban. I mean, it's nonsense. Um, I don't know. Maybe the guy knows. Um, Something's been sort of agreed, you know, in the background or what. Um, that sounds that sounds like absolute cheating fans to me. Um, the guy should be punished for uh, his 
inexplicable um, chlorophene found in his system, you know, because he hasn't given us a proper um, explanation as to how that's happened. Um, no, nah, that's disgraceful. I hope yeah. he just gets a. I hope he gets a proper ban. Hope the board of control stand up to him properly or stick with what they were going with up until now. Yeah. What do you think to Ricky Burns still uh, wanting to fight? Uh, I think it's just that, that classic case of um, free weight world just champion, don't know yeah, to, uh, free weight world champion, the forgotten man, isn't he? Yeah. Well, you know. Anyone that's ever watched them obviously remembers them like, but it's easy, you know, a lot of, a lot of fighters in history and there's some people who you just don't, um, you don't remember as uh, easily as you do others, you know? So I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, him coming back generally, like he's, he's, uh, he's gotta be about my age, early forties. Um, what what more has he got to prove? Do you know what I mean? Unless he's skinned. Uh, do you know what I mean? Um, what was his last fight? Was that oh. against? Oh, his last fight was Willie Lemon. I just looked it up there. He got beat, didn't he? Uh, TKO. Lemon got beat. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just need, think you need need to be careful. Um, once you get that age, like you know, sometimes you gotta know it's when they. Been on they, a bit now, isn't it? Sometimes you gotta know when to bow out. You know yourself, like how many fighters have we seen do it? Like it's the same with this whole, you know, um, Kell Brook thing. Stay retired, like you know. Enjoy your money. Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns has had four hundred and twenty-two rounds. That's you know. a that's a hell of a lot of rounds. And he's saving for him himself, doesn't he? Really? I think so, Russ. Um, I haven't heard him talking recently, so I'd be curious to see if there's any kind of damage from. All those rounds, that's a lot of abuse, you know. Where's well, been fighting? Uh, he turned pro in 2001. 13 years ago. 23 years he's been boxing. Like, I'm um, just looking on his record as well. So he's 54. That's that's old school numbers, 54 fights. Um, 54 fights in 23 years. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what what le- what is a guy like got got um left to prove. Well, he's five month five nearly six month out at ring next week, right? And he's knocking on a bit now. And he's uh, have a look in the mirror and say, look, I've got all my faculties. Whether I'm a multi millionaire or not, get out while you can, because you'll end up like Danny Williams. Yeah. Uh. The last I heard um, anything about Danny Williams, he was still fighting. I don't know if he still is or not. They save him from themselves, don't they, fighters? Yeah, I actually couldn't believe it. I hadn't heard Danny Williams in years. And then um, <laughs> randomly out of nowhere, it's like, oh, Danny Williams is fighting in some random country, some random opponent. And I, I actually couldn't believe it. So then I went and checked him out again, and I, I couldn't believe how much activity he had racked up just taking those garbage fights. Just, I don't know. He must do somebody a lot of money. And he's probably not making a lot, so that's probably why I had to do so many of those kind of fights, you know, so long after his heyday. Like. What do you think to Eddie Hills' performance recently, you know, in the media? What do you think? Yeah. Oh, same old Eddie, really. Uh, you know, he's playing the... Uh, He's playing the card of um, everything's hunky dory between him and um, Frank Warren. He's trying to not uh, discredit like the likes of Fury, who um, you know any other time he'd jump all over that cancellation, but because he's um, he's playing the, uh, the 
the role of uh, best friend at the minute. I think he's just trying to protect uh, what's going on there between him, Frank Warren, and the 30s. So, you know, usual snake type behavior from Eddie Hills, like. And, B- and BS as well. Yeah. You know, what I find funny about the sport of boxing, though, right, is we got Eddie Hills talking to people in boxing industry, like he's Eddie Richardson, when really he's just Eddie Hills, isn't he? You know, a privately educated million, millionaire's son who's never had any hardship in his life. Same with Crusher Ben. He's calling out all these top names, but yet he's swerving up the domestic scene. You know, as he get beat, yeah, he's saying he'll fight Crawford, Ennis, Ainey, Garcia, Tank Davis, uh, Kelbrook, Eubank. Yeah, then fight McKinston, Conger, Josh Kelly, David Evanesian, Crocker and Scaff. You know what I mean? All swerved by Crusher. You know, the private school educated roadman. You know, another, pri- another privileged kid wanting pay-per-view money, but they were allowing... These media people are allowing these to just say and do as they want. Nobody holds them account. You know, have you seen how Eddie speaks to people? It's shocking. And then we've got Crusher coming out with all this rubbish. And that he's called all them names out and ended up with Peter Dobson. You know, <laughs> it's, just, it's just waffle for the sake of it. I'm just about sick of it, mate. Are you? Oh, I'm, I'm so sick to death of it. Uh, I can't believe, I know we have to talk about these type of things, but uh, um, I just wish he'd go away, Russ. Um, that I can't hold something against somebody who's born, you know, into, they're well off, you know, they've been brought up with everything, but you don't need to be a complete prick about it. You know what I mean? It just happens that sometimes you get some people from that background who turn into pricks because, you know, they're spoiled and they're rich and they can do whatever the hell they want. But, you know, what I don't understand with Crusher Brian is I think, you know, a little bit more, he was a little bit more like Eubank Jr. wanting to prove himself as a sportsman because I truly got that impression from Eubank Jr. initially, even though, again, I'm not a fan of him. But I did get the impression that he legitimately wanted to prove himself as a sportsman. So all those, you know, domestic fights that Crusher has avoided, even Asian and stuff like that, you know, um, you know, I, I personally, if I was Crusher Ben, would be, yeah, give me the next guy, give me the next guy, because I'd want to overcome the, um, the prick uh, persona that some people might, you know, perceive him to have because he's a rich kid, you know, he's, had a privileged upbringing, all those type of things. But instead, with Crusher Ben, we have the complete opposite. You know, I nearly vomited over myself the time I seen the Heated Seats video. It's everything I despise in a person. I don't care if he was faking it or not, right? That was uh, like, I was just like, you are a complete and utter asshole. And that's why I'm really glad whenever you do the bruv, 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 Heated Seats. Because it was like, are you are you are you like trying to shove your you know your position in society your wealth in the faces of people who don't have that type of um, luxury? Do you know what I mean? Because you you shouldn't. And boxing is like a well known. It's a sport for the working class, you know, um, man. Do you know what I mean? It can uh, allow somebody to come from a lesser, wealthy background. And make something for themselves. Do you know what I mean? That's part of the beauty of it. And how many stories have we heard? People coming from bad backgrounds, tough backgrounds, whatever, are making self, uh, making something of themselves. And then you've got this prick, who he's just rubbed everybody up the wrong way, and he's dodged everything that he needs to not dodge, just to find the easiest route to some kind of title to say he became some kind of champion. It's garbage. Um, it's garbage, Russ. Sorry, I just like, went, went in a big rant there, sorry. It's all right. It's a bit like Fury, though, isn't it? Some of the stuff he comes out with. You know, 
I'm I run boxing. You know, I'm a goat. And then you know, and it goes. It says that on that on seven or eight platforms, and everybody picks up on it, and then it spreads like a cancer. And it's like press releases from in it. So they can't start banning people who don't want to ask proper questions because they've made millions out of media. They've used the media to their own devices because they're cunning. But uh, it, but it's all ingrained in us, isn't it, that he's a goat because they keep telling us. So the casuals believe it. But if you look at his record, he's got Steve Cunningham, a cruiserweight, old man Vladimir, and Wilder on his CV. That's it, or Wilder twice, though. And then you look at other people's CV, Jamie McDonnell, Richie Woodall, Davy Day, they've all got more wins of world champions than Tyson. He's got the same as Bellew, Tyson. And we know what we think about Bellew's CV, don't we? And Johnny Nelson. Do you know what I mean? I'm not having a dig at them, but they're not, Bellew and Johnny Nelson are not running around saying they're a goat and the greatest of all time and that, are they really? Do you well, know what I mean? You wouldn't put it past Tony Bell, but Johnny Nelson's a lot more grounded, I think. Yeah, now, well, so you wouldn't hear Tony Bell saying he's greatest of all time, would you? No, but, uh, no. You know, but I, I think what you're saying about Fury, I mean, um, you know, I've said it a million times, sorry if it pisses people off. Like, I'm not Tyson Fury. Still time, but there's still Tyson time. Fury. Still time, Jerry. For Tyson to prove that he is, but he's gonna to have to fight for about five, six year and 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 at least two a year. He needs he needs more wins to be in the in at the down and at the top table, doesn't he? Yeah, so he can't call himself a goat. He's not proved that. He discredits actual goats. They're letting him have the platforms to say it though. Jerry, you're missing point. People are letting him have yeah, the but... But we... Hang on a minute, and then the, they're not pulling him up on it. That's what's going on. They're not pulling him because they lose the press passes. It's so that they've got it. They've got best of both worlds. And well, we don't want him in because he's going to ask us our questions. Yeah, we'll have him in and not him. And then they're getting their own point across. It's like their news, but fake, isn't it? And everybody's bought into it. But I think now they've been found out now with all the fairy stories. Me, there's just too many of them, isn't there? Well, we live in that era now where nobody else before has ever had that access to media. It's because of the the whole, you know, YouTube kind of journalism that's out there now. So basically you could say Fury's been clever in that way by manipulating that to his own benefit. And um yeah, you're right. It's it passes off the, the BS stories so much and basically ram it's been rammed down people's throats that people buy it. And then Fury's able to turn around and just say, well, you can't get access anymore to one of my shows because of X, Y, and Z. And it creates this fear. Um, when has that ever been a thing in history where press, supposed press asking questions, got them thrown out of, you know, attending uh, fights? It's, it's absolute madness, mate. It's madness. Yeah. What do you think to uh, Taylor Cashrell selling out uh, within an half an hour, according to Eddie? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, that's the sort of thing he's going to say. I don't know if that's legit or not. Um, I mean, it's a it's a good fight. Um, it's generating a lot of interest. But I mean, you know, when we were last speaking, we hadn't heard anything about this for quite a while. So it was literally just sort of a quick development, really. So. I don't know. Um, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's uh, sell well, but I don't know if it's sold out. Well, it's a, have... 12, it's a twelve thousand arena, right? There's ten fights on, so that's twenty fighters. So twenty fighters are going to take at least six thousand of them tickets easily all day long. That leaves six thousand. There'll be probably a thousand people comped. You know, people they want to look after and blah de, blah that'll leave what five thousand they could easily just put two thousand through arena and three thousand on sub up and then everybody's told it's sold out well has anybody checked if there's any on sub up let's have a look shall we 
Let's see. Let's hope not. Uh, what's the fight called again? Oh, Taylor Catchell. Because you know yourself. There you go. There you go. There you go. Via go go. Stub up. Josh Taylor versus Jack Catchell on Stub up. There you go. Hundreds and hundreds for sale. Stub up. There you go. Stub up. Josh Taylor versus Jack Catchell ticket. Saturday, 27th of April, 5 p.m. First Direct Arena, Leeds, WK, WYK. Oh, it must be a postcode that. Upper tier, 114 quid, 118 quid, 130, 133 quid, all the way up to, so we're up, 580 quid, floor C. Floor C, 580 quid. There you go, stub up. Eddie will be getting a slice of that, but I bet the fighters won't. So that's how they do it. They give stub up so many thousand after giving them out to fighters. So, right, can you definitely do these? The fighters yeah. are oh, yeah, and with the managers and trainers. Then they say, right, these are left. For a couple at Arena. I have my name in 500 at First Direct Arena. And they sell them just like that, don't they? But the rest of them are on stub up. Stub up. And that's how, this, that's how they do it. And I know that because... Let's just say I know off the. Let's just say I know that, and it's a, it's no it's no hidden secret. That's how they do it. But technically, it is sold out. But it in the it's face not. value tickets are sold out, and everybody's yeah. happy. So they know what the balance sheet is. But the stubborn ones are generating extra income, and that's the promoter's job. So you can't fault them. It's a loophole. It's basically just slapping your giving you a slap. That's why you have yeah. to join Matchroom Fight Pass to get the first shout on the tickets for the big shows. And that's the, that was 30 quid a year. So I would remember that for one year. True story, that. That was years ago, though, that. Oh, really? Yeah, I would remember for one year. Yeah, I would have Matchroom Fight Pass, man. <laughs> that's like yeah, I bought into it all. Me being a member of that's like me being a member of a dead zone for two months, three months. Sometimes you have to, if, if it's not ticket, but uh, listen, so I don't buy into all that. Oh, it's sold out and it's massive, a massive fight and all that. Look, first of all, there's no belt on the line at all, and they've both been beat. Yeah. So it was a massive fight two years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it sure was. So, what do you think to this Saudi character? Do you think he's like a bit of a James Bond type guy? This uh, Willy Wonka, Triple T. <laughs> yeah. When did you start calling him Willy Wonka? I don't know. I just get all sorts going in my head sometimes, don't I? It's been one of them months. <laughs> it's been, it's been one of them months since the second of Feb. I'm glad it's um, the guys. Uh... Guy is a businessman, right? He's got a lot of money. Um, it's it's the same of all the sports that they're involved in. They're just trying to show clout. Um, Terry mentioned this months and months and months and months ago about what the Saudis were at. And unfortunately, I can't remember every single detail, but he basically na nailed it. You know, they're they're like looking to inflate Saudi Arabia's image by bringing these sports to the country, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do we really buy that he's a huge boxing fan? He probably is a bit of a boxing fan, you know, but is he really the the new god of boxing, blah, blah, blah? Is he going to be the new Vegas? You know, probably not. It's probably not going to last forever. You know, five years tops, maybe not even. Um. I don't know. Some some people really seem to like bang on about this guy, like he's a uh, some kind of great, amazing person. But I mean, I don't really know too much about him, other than he's just a millionaire guy, and he's just 
um, he's got financial clout and he's using it to do whatever he wants and mess with whatever sport he wants to. Um, and, you know, so far it's not been amazing. There's been like a handful of big fights. So I don't think he's really delivering on this um, thing that people are sort of banging on about, saying Saudi is going to be the new mecca, you know, for boxing and all that type of stuff. We've got think? a question here, Jerry, from Jonathan8230. Right. Is Tyson Fury beatable? I don't think he is. He's a bit of a fanatic. So uh, I'll let you answer it first, and I will. Okay. Is he beatable? Right. If you really yeah. want to do, like, answer that question, he was already beat by John McDermott. So, yes. He's been on the floor seven times. Yeah, seven, five in the last seventy rounds. Right. Of course, he's he's beatable. Um, I'm I try not to be biased because I'm not a fan and I've never liked him. But um, of course, he's beatable. And I think I've I've always thought Usyk was going to beat him, um, even since this was going to be spoken about, um, or you know, before the match was even made between the two. Um, I think um, some of his wins have been questionable. Some of his points have been questionable. Been carefully matched. I actually think he would have lost if he fought Vladimir Klitschko again. Um, he is so beatable. Um, but, you know, at the same time, he's also got great skills as well that, you know, he, uh, he can hang in there whenever uh, he's with a solid a decent opponent, but I don't think is I don't think his um, reputation is actually what it should be. I think a lot of it is being inflated over a thin padded record, and then you've got all this sort of thing that we were talking about earlier, where he's basically sold everyone this idea about himself through media, social oh. media. And love all that. Yeah, I, you don't believe that, right? I don't believe that stuff either. But Terry was talking like that the other night, like that's legit. I don't believe I don't, it. I don't yeah. believe it, mate. It's, it's bullshit. I think it's bullshit. Oh, I know it is anyway, but that's another, that's another story. But uh, so, yes, he's beatable. He's beatable. Well, this is how I look at it. John McDermott, I had him beating him comfortably. Yeah. Wilder dropped him twice. He's a way fighter being dropped twice, right? In the champion's back garden, yeah? Yeah. He got away with that weird draw. You, how many times does a, a way fighter go abroad, get dropped twice and come away with wins? It's very rare, isn't it? So I think yeah. you were fortunate there. The Walling fight, every referee I've spoke to us it should have been stopped. Have stopped it. Right? 100%. So that that would even though Tyson's a better boxer, he would have been unfortunate, but that's that's how it goes. So they rolled the I'm dice different. for that one. And the Angano one. Uh Mecca, Mecca, wait, what you want to make of it? So there's four cases there where he's had the rubber the green. Now he's been dropped five times in his last 70 rounds. That's telling you that Father Time's catching up on him. Because normally nobody could get a glove on him, could they, when he were younger? Yeah, like when he was doing that whole herky jerky thing, no. yeah, it's, it's not just that. He's an he is an exceptionally he's an he's an exceptional boxer. He's very good on his feet. The, his skill set's extraordinary, but his feet the, he's very good on his feet. Although at times when he gets caught, he goes on like Bambi, doesn't he? Yeah, Do you know what I mean? he's always trying, but he, he's got really good footwork and quick footwork for a very big man. But father time catches up. We look, it caught up with Ali, didn't it? Nobody thought uh, Ali would get beat, did they? After he did Foreman, but he just he, Ali got into the reds like Tyson does. But you can't get into Usyk's head. Right, Usyk's fought every style. He's not bothered. He's still going to be there. And if he don't fight Usyk in May, he'll be shamed forever and ever and ever. He needs to hope he don't get injured now because someone's going to believe him. The third time. Fool you yeah. once, fool you twice. What do they say after the third one? Fool you, it's your own fault, isn't it? Yeah. So if, he, if he gets injured and it's genuine, 
nobody's going to buy it anyway, are they? So he's on a lose-lose, yeah. isn't he? He's back in the corner. Well, he's got a fight. I'll pay 10 mil. Do you not think if people were um, so afraid of losing their unbeaten record, do you not think, um, like Ali lost, all the greats um, generally had losses on their record. Do you not think if that wasn't such a thing and Fury had had some losses on his record but faced better caliber opponents, do you not think, you know, Lennox Lewis had losses, do you know what I mean? Do you not think there'd be more credibility about him if he'd fought more top 10 opponents but maybe taken the odd loss? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, listen, I'm going to get off Jerry because Liverpool and Southampton are, are on. So No sweat, mate. No sweat. In cup. The magic of the cup. <laughs> so, all right, my friend. Listen, you take care. Thanks, no worries, for, mate. thanks for coming on, Jerry. And uh, I hope next time you come on, we'll see your face and that you've got rid of that magnum tash. I tried to do a picture, mate, but it wouldn't let me. I tried to stick a, a picture of uh, Barry it's Holmes on, but it wouldn't. It, it? I know a good doctor for that. You'd be, <laughs> be able to stretch it about like they, like they have done me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. No, sir, mate. Take it easy. Right, right. Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. So it looks like it's gonna be. It looks like it's gonna be Liverpool, Southampton, and then James Cagney, Angels with Dirty Faces. Ron Pop Pop Bang. Peace out, Max. How's your training going? <laughs>